Welcome back to Bailiwick Energy Shipwrecks. I'm JP Fallais, and this is the channel where you join us on a dive. We're going to be going scuba diving for scallops. Uh, we want to do shipwrecks, but we can't at the moment because the weather is just not good enough. Plus, we need uh, scallops. You can see here in the background, sadly, uh, one of our restaurants uh, burnt down at 4 a.m. this morning. Octopus, not nice, not nice for anyone. Okay, <clears throat> weather today, pretty good. I'm a little bit, got a little bit of a cold, but I'll be all right. It looks nice. This looks okay, in between the petrol. I don't know where that petrol's come from. And it's just drizzling ever so slightly, but look at the windsock. Nothing there. And I think that on the end there might be Mish. Just getting out of the blue dolphins. So today it's just going to be me, Matt and Keeney. So let's get it on. Let's go for it. Let's go get some scallops. Uh, Sylvia's gone. Where's she gone? Oh, there she is, Danny Margaret. Let's go. This is flat as anything. Can't wait. Some more divers on the slip bay there. I do recognise one of them, there's Mish, going out blue dolphins. Just me and Matt today. Morning. And Captain Keeney, what are we doing today? Well, I don't think we're going for lunch at the Octopus because it's a bit well cooked this morning while looking at the smoke. But uh, yeah, it's, um, it's cold, it's wet, it's miserable and it's February so a bit quick dive. Too far from the harbour and um, the cafe opens at half past ten. Beautiful. That's what we like. Better get my gear ready. Straight down and straight into the action. Welcome back below the waves. We are in an area that's just outside the harbour mouth, pretty much, uh, maybe a quarter of a mile, and we're heading in a southerly direction. The sea isn't that deep here, it's probably 21, 22 metres, and there's plenty of old bits of wreckage to look at, old fishing pots, and loads of old picked crabs, shells, and shock shells. So 20 metres, and we've just been over a minute check my air, always check my air when I'm on the bottom, just make sure it's actually going down. Figure out which way the tide's going, which won't take long. In fact, it's a little bit slack today. And I know Rich has told me not to go northeast. So at the moment I'm heading northeast, so I'm gonna turn, go back into my dust cloud. Less than ideal, but we gotta do it. I'm just quick check on my compass again. Oh, go northeastly again, it's weird. Turn all the way around. I can hear Matt calling out for me, but I don't even know where he is. Oh, here he is. I wonder who's making all this dust. Looks like he's found a cannonball, possibly. He's kicking off all that really fine silt that's been drifting around for the last few weeks. I see him wobbling, it looks massive. Looks like the visibility is almost at zero. We'll probably still got about a metre. But well, that's fine, we'll just wait around in it, wait until it clears. Because there is not much tide, you can't see it really moving, it's just sort of swirling upwards. Just make sure Matt's still there. He ain't swum off. Yeah, I think he's digging out two huge cannibals. They look like they're connected together. Oh. 
Yeah, that's peculiar. Look at them, they're all stuck together. Don't know, might be be interesting to get these to the surface. They could be bar shot. So it's basically two balls with a large bar that, that ties them together. Designed to be fired out of cannon and um, spin end over end and try and take out rigging. Matt's going to try and get both of these balls inside a mesh bag. Uh, it won't fit him in his scalloping bag. These are just probably too heavy. They look extremely heavy, to be honest. Especially as there's two together. Matt's already got his lift bag actually tied to his mesh bag. You can see it there, it's been clipped on. So it's just a matter of sliding these into the bag, uh, tightening the neck up on it, and then putting some air inside the bag. As we're down at pressure, uh, as you put air inside this inflator bag, it wants to obviously rise to the surface, the same as your air bubbles. Uh, basically, you just need to make sure the lifting capacity, so the water that this air inside the bag displaces, is less than the weight of the, the thing you're going to send up if it isn't well it won't lift so fingers crossed this 25 kilo lift bag which i think is 25 kilos could be 20 um lifts this bit of a giveaway there matt has got it pretty much maxed out you watch you put the airs the air in and then loads of this white stuff comes out this is tail compelder and stuff that's inside the bag doesn't it look like it's going to lift. Oh, it's lifting, just about. This is probably where it's all going to go wrong because as this bag lifts, the air volume inside that lift bag is also going to increase with less pressure pushing on it. So it's basically going to be become larger. As it becomes so large, it will start burping out the bottom. So air bubbles will bubble out. A little butterfly blenny in this bottle. That would have been a really nice bottle as well. Not mega old, 1880 I'm guessing, but it's lost the lip. So this butterfly blenny uh, keeps his home. Just lay him back down. I'll put the neck out of the way of the tide, so I'll put it across the tide. Let's carry on, let's go and see if we can find any scallops. Matt's gone off in the opposite direction.
this is a bit worrying. This isn't good at all. This could either be two things. First thing it could be, it could be a dive tank. This could be the bottom end of the dive tank and the valve end is actually buried into the sand. But I'm not going to touch this because I don't think that's a dive tank. I reckon that's a bomb. So let's carry on, you mustn't touch them. Plenty of old bottles around here. It's always the same though outside the harbour. You can imagine it, someone just on the back of a boat, finish this drink and plop it over the side. It's not so bad because they're quite inert to be honest. So, I mean, they're creating homes for Tom Pop Blennies. Um, well, not so much Tom Pop Blennies, but uh, butterfly Blennies. They seem to be the only things that actually live in them. Potentially there's other stuff that goes in there, but that's what seems to be sticking its head out of every single one of the bottles. They're above the sand that is. Let's just look how dark it is. And this is a GoPro and it's not perfectly good at low light stuff, but it is fairly dark today. Also the scallops are far and few between. There's a very fine silt on top of all of these scallops. It's probably from the recent storms. I'll say recent storms, we've probably had storms for the last couple of months. I recognise where I am. This is a big half drum, a big 40-gallon uh, drum. Half of it is actually filled up with concrete and someone's used it for a mooring. Some nice old glass there, some early glass. Always check these bottles. Uh, a lot of them very modern now. And the bottles tend to congregate around a hard object, such as this. So you can see here, uh, this is a, 
an old mooring system. Not quite sure whose mooring system it was, possibly uh, Guernsey Yacht Club, but I'm unsure. And as always, if you notice, I always check these. So I always check these uh, sherds of glass pottery. Oh, what have I found here? It's a very old pipe. Not quite sure how old. Certainly before the 1920s, that's for sure, because that's when when they stopped using these things. This one's quite ornate on the barrel, which is the bottom part you put tobacco in. I'll keep that and I'll give you a show back on the surface. Fairly annoying because I've got to keep it in my hand now. Just so I can't be bothered to unzip my pocket and put it in. Potentially when I get back on the boat up the ladder they could crack inside my pocket, so I'll just keep it in my hand. Got five minutes left. Uh, my air, oh, I've got plenty of air left. 150. Okay, I'm going to keep the 150 for my next dive and let's get to the surface. That's not that good, to be honest. That's pretty poor. But this is an area that I know Matt and Richard and Jeff have hit quite hard lately. Uh, right outside the harbour. So this is the little pipe. You can see it's like slightly fluted on the barrel. It snapped off because it would have been a lot longer originally on the stem. I didn't think I was trusting my uh, compass there. It's, uh, it needed recalibrating. It kept saying I was going north or north easterly, which so I knew we should not be going north easterly, we should be going south. So it's just recalibrating. I'm not sure if it works. Unfortunately, Matt's bag didn't come to the surface. So, cannibals, lift bag. Oh, shit. You're right. Your bag didn't come to the surface. Oh, no. no. It was hovering about 16 metres. I was like, oh, I'm not sure if that's going to go. Uh, yeah, it wasn't uh, less than ideal conditions, to be honest. It just hovered, Matt, about sort of 18 metres. I was like, and I didn't have my bag on me, otherwise I would have put another lift bag on it. That's a shame. That is a shame. We'll go back and have a look for it. Do the same run again. Got a bit of the bugging yeast hanging there. That's it, she gone. I thought when it went off, I was like... It hovered. And I was like, oh, I don't know what's going to go. And it did, unfortunately. You done a bit better than me. Is it dark for you? Eh? Dark. Dark? I always felt, I, it felt like there was a reef alongside me the whole time. <laughs> okay. If you don't, go and check the engine out because uh, it's had new, a new head put on it. So I'm just going to go in and check the engine. Let's get these sorted quick. Nice and quiet. Lovely. 
There's pandemonium on the boat. Um, I had one minute deco. I had five minutes left at 25 metres. It's straight back in and straight down. As soon as I at the bottom, I notice there's a crab pot. And these little things that look like fingers, they look like cheerleaders' pom poms in the tide, are actually squid eggs. So all of these little strands would probably have, I don't know, 20 to 30, 40, 50 maybe squid in each individual strand. They, they show up as their eyes first and there's two little silver dots in them. Very hard to see, uh, especially with this camera. But what I will do is I'll do a macro of them because this is the time of year. In fact, it's slightly early. They shouldn't really be around at the moment. But, you know, end of May, you should be seeing all these eggs. And there's quite a few around already. We have dropped back down exactly the same place as where we went first time. And I know we've dropped in exactly the same place because right here, I've seen this on the first dive, this, this box, this galvanised box with the bottom mixed out. One thing I didn't see on the first dive was this. There's a butterfly blending that's got outside a bottle here. Look at its dorsal fin, it's got a lovely round dot on it. And these blennies are very, very shy. You hardly ever see them out, to be honest. Well, you see them out when you tip them out of a bottle, but apart from that, you never really see them out. The males normally live in either whelk shells or bottles. I see them in bottles, and they guard the eggs. Really cool little fish. Very ornate. And this is a prime example of me and Matt have just dived through here and in fact some of the silt is still in the water uh, so you can see areas where we've been dragging our dive bags and we're still finding loads of scallops it doesn't surprise me because there is just so many of them me and Matt were chatting about bottles and we looked at a Gordon gin that Matt had a small one I said I'd never seen anyone with a date on so I've just found one so I'll keep that and I'll put it in his bongo when he's not watching As usual, second dive, always keep an eye on the air. Basically, I've got no buffer anymore. And on the first dive, I had half a tank as a buffer. Now I'm on my half a tank, so I've really got to keep an eye on it. Once you do diving for so long, it almost becomes sort of second nature. You always check anyway.
As soon as you come back up, the sun's out. It shows the tide there, look the buff flying past. Yeah, you can see it. Even the bulletproof glass in the front there's uh, smashed out. It's not a smoke as it was. It's hard to see. A little bit more than the first. Me and Matt have chat before. These aren't old bottles by any means of the imagination. Gordon's. Gordon's London Gin. And I said, I've never seen one with a date on the side. And I just dived and found one with a date on the side. So. That's cool, it's got like a little eagle on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Not old, I'm going to leave that in his bongo. The next size up, I reckon. There you go. The mummy and the daddy. Let's get these sorted. It's old or not? Yes. Sorry, I'm afraid it's not rare and valuable. Over the side. Oh well. It's always next time. 99. Oh, that's good. Uh -huh. And the sun's out. increased by at least three meters when that sun come out it's a lot better the second dive than the first dive we didn't find max bag that's now uh that's lost that's probably floating at 15 meters might not ever see it again we might do time to head in time to go to the cafe i managed to get richard about 65 scallops just about pays the fuel i suppose matt got two crates can't complain with that. Thanks for coming along again with us. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Very dark, but uh, I enjoyed myself to be honest. And I was a little bit over an hour to come because I had a little bit of a cold issue with the uh, ears a little bit, but it was fine. Uh, Equalised on the surface. If I could do that, I'm fine. So thanks for coming along, and we'll catch you on the next tide.